With the latest Genji changes that have surfaced on the experimental card, I've seen a few players say that Genji won't be as strong, and oh boy, let me tell you, that's not even close to the truth. So much so that I made an entire guide just so that you can continue to climb after the fact. And trust me, he's strong. My name is Nate, and welcome to Blizzard Guides. To keep this guide simple, I have three sections for this video. Now, there are seven tips, but there's just three sections to make it more simple. So first, I have some mechanics just so I can give you some tools to work with and make sure that everyone is on the same page. And then second section would be a fairly in-depth playstyle guide that'll put you in the mindset of the best way to approach Genji in this meta and probably for a long time in a straightforward way. And then third, I'll just have some juicy dragon blade tips so you can actually get some really clean blades. So with that, let's get right in. So starting us off at number seven is all of the mechanics all in one tip. Now I'm going to show you all the mechanics and I'm going to briefly describe how to use them, but I'm not really going to get too in depth because the best way to figure out how to use what combos when is by watching gameplay and improving your own. There's no good way to just tell you how to use them and when to use them. So starting us off is the simplest one is the alternate fire and melee animation cancel. If you alternate fire and then immediately melee, you'll animation cancel the alternate fire, which will allow you to sprinkle in an an alternate fire with a melee which is really great for confirming kills. Next is the dash alternate fire melee combo. By dashing and holding alternate fire, you will instantly right click with no animation and following that with a melee will bring a target to a very low HP. So this is great for confirming kills on targets that are already low. And better yet, if you actually land the all headshots with that dash, it will confirm the kill on a 200 HP target. And you can also even short dash by dashing into their feet and then looking up and then alternate firing and meleeing, which will still complete the combo. Next is the alternate fire dash animation cancel, which will animation cancel your alternate fire followed by a dash. This one's good for if the target is close to you and not far away. Next is the alternate fire deflect animation cancel. You will alternate fire and then immediately deflect to animation cancel your alternate fire to deal significantly more damage and follow it up with the deflect. Mentioning that also you can cancel your deflect by pressing the deflect key again. Some players just don't know that so I'll briefly mention that. Next is the alternate fire ultimate animation cancel. If you alternate fire right before you ult, you will animation cancel your alternate fire, which will deal damage, which will allow you on a naked blade to confirm a kill with just a slash and dash if you land a proper right click. Next up is a bit more of an advanced one. It is the alternate fire melee wall climb dash combo. It's a bit of a mouthful, but basically what you do is if you alternate fire and melee, there's a bit of a cooldown before you can right click again. But if you wall climb, it will reset that cooldown, allowing you to dash immediately afterwards, which is great because you can confirm a kill. Next is the triple jump. This one is actually really straightforward and a lot of players know how to do this, but nobody actually uses that in their gameplay in lower ranks. So start using this. What you do is you jump, then you double jump, and then you briefly wall climb to effectively get an extra jump. It's not actually a triple jump, but it works really great. So if you can use it, do use it because a lot of players don't. Next is canceling the sheathing animation of your ultimate with deflect dash. You would expect me to say wall climb if you are an experienced Genji player, but that has been rather inconsistent for me and I've seen it be inconsistent for other Genjis. So canceling your deflect with dash also cancels the sheathing animation, which is like a double cancel, which works really great. So if you have that deflect cooldown and you need to use it, you can cancel the sheath by using deflect and deflect dash. Next is an advanced technique with Genji's shuriken. If you actually aim to the sides with your alternate fire, you can land two headshots instead of just one with an alternate fire. As you can see here, if you aim dead on, you're only going to get that one in the middle, but if you aim slightly to the left, you can get two shurikens to headshot. And then finally, I just wanna close this section off by mentioning ghost dashing. Just stop using ghost dash. It's just flashy. It offers no tactical advantage whatsoever. The good Genjis do it because it just looks cool, but really you should be patient with your dashes unless you're 100% certain that you will land that dash. Then moving on to the playstyle section, I have many playstyles that I've seen worked with Genji, but my personal favorite is the blade focused and active Genji. This is just the one that I see work the best. So the next three tips will deal with your primary, secondary, and tertiary goals and objectives when playing Genji, and, and that'll dictate how your playstyle actually works. So at number six, let's talk about your primary goal when playing Genji. 
it should be focusing on building blade and nothing alone. You should just be a predator for the enemy tanks and use your alternate fire to land as many shots as possible at once just because it has more damage per second than your primary fire. Your primary should really only be used for poking and trying to deal damage from a long range but when you can land more shurikens with the alt fire do that instead. Headshots are super easy to land with the double shuriken technique on tanks so if you're just spamming constantly at tanks with that alternate fire using that double shuriken technique you'll build your blade really fast and you should be averaging blade about every other fight so that would be every two fights in ranks below grandmasters when you're really in the flow with genji and you're just doing well it's okay if you get you know blade in three fights or something like that but if it takes you four five six fights to build blade you're really doing something wrong then coming in at number five, let's talk about your secondary goal, which should be abusing easy kill squishies. Anything that you can quickly and easily kill, you should go for. And the things to look out for when killing squishies is pretty simple. First off, out of position targets are pretty obvious, but you should go for out of position targets that cannot be helped by their team. There is a difference between being quote unquote out of position and then being out of the way of their supports. And more often than not in ranked, you'll see that second former version where they're just out of position there's no way for their team to heal them and you can quickly get the kill on them that's the kind of out of position targets you should be going for then on top of that you should look for targets that have no more cooldowns or that are low so anybody that's basically vulnerable so if the mccree you know used his role used his flashbang and he's half hp you can easily dash in right click melee and dash back out but only do that if you know you can get the kill and get out if you're not really sure it's not really worth it and then also finally in brawl fights where things are getting really hectic you can also go for targets that you can catch off guard that aren't focusing on you so like let's say the McCree is shooting at your Winston or something like that and he's not looking at you you can go for targets like that too then coming in at number four let's talk about the tertiary goal which should be just maintaining activity just you need to be an active player in the fight as often as possible and focus on being active during specifically peeling and kiting. Now, what is peeling and kiting you might ask? Well, peeling is simply protecting or going to aid other people on your team. So typically you'll be peeling for your supports. So if your Anna is getting dove or maybe she needs help or the widow is shooting at her or something like that, using your deflect to help protect is a good idea. And similarly, kiting is just the process of slowly backing up and using angles to avoid enemy damage and so when your team is kiting backwards and you know retreating from the fight you can maintain your activity by peeling and helping your team as they exit the fight and then one of the other things that you should be doing is just using your deflect against high value abilities when you definitely don't need deflect to win a duel so maybe right before a fight is starting or right as a fight wraps up or maybe sometimes when the enemy team is engaging and you know you can get a big play out of that deflect Deflect. So examples of high value abilities would be Moira Orbs or Reinhardt Fire Strikes or Anti Nades, Ash's Dynamites, Echo Sticky Bombs, or maybe even Roadhog's Hook if your teammate will be in danger because of that because the Roadhog is going for a late pick or a early poking pick. And if you really want to get fancy, you can also do that with Zarya's Gravs and Tracer's Pulse Swamp, Hanzo Ults and May Ults, but you really have to be aware of when those abilities are going to be used and paying attention to that. So that's a bit more difficult, but basically the idea is Deflect is a really useful ability for denying ultimate charge of the enemy team. So in the example of Reinhardt Fire Strike, one of the most annoying things as a Ryan player is when Genji just constantly deflects my Fire Strikes because it means I cannot build Shatter very quickly and you will build ult as Genji very quickly. So it's super important that you deflect high value abilities when you don't need deflect in the upcoming fight. If you do, it's better just to save it. And then also a quick note is that you also really need to help clean up targets when your team has has a decent ability to clean up that said target. You need to make kills happen faster. And then coming in at number three, I just have a few other important concepts that I either want to reiterate or just bring up. First off, you, you really need to stay active when you're retreating. So what that means is don't dash out and leave your teammates to die when you are retreating from a fight. Help them get out of the fight with your deflect. Don't put yourself in danger and don't die over it. If they're going to die or you're going to die, you obviously want to save yourself. But if you can help, don't immediately dash out. Stay there, help them get out, deal some damage, build your ult, and it will work a lot better. And then on top of that, one of the super, super important things that most Genjis miss is that you just need your cooldowns. You cannot engage a fight without dash. Now, I'm not saying that you can't engage duels with dash, 
but team fights with Dash. You, you want to have your abilities to be able to win those duels and confirm kills and build ults and be able to get out of the fight, which is another point is most players fail because they don't go into fights with escape options in mind. They kind of just go for kills, focus on what you're doing and how you're going to get out. You know, if you use your dash, what was valuable about it? Was it, did you use it to get out? Did you use it to deal damage? Or did you just use it to use it? Think like that and your mentality as Genji will be great. And then on top of that, what really helps is just being patient with your cooldowns. You know, you don't really need to use dash all the time to confirm kills. You can get kills without using dash. That's a... I mean, it, it's not that wild of a concept. You want to save your dash so you can get out if you don't get that kill. So just be patient with your cooldowns and things will be a lot easier. So next up, let's talk about Dragon Blade tips. So I have two sections for this. I have first playstyle tips and then I actually have mechanical tips so that you can understand what tools you'll actually need to be using because I think the playstyle stuff is more important than the mechanics on Dragon Blade. So coming in at number two, those playstyle tips. So first off, do not go for montage blades. It, it sucks to say that because one of Genji's appeal is the montage blade, but the matter of fact is that you're not going to get montage blades every single match, and you're probably not going to get a montage blade in a single play session. It, it, it's just unlikely. It, it, it doesn't happen for everybody, and the pros practice more than you've played, and they failed more than you've played, and they will play more than you play, because that's what their job is to do. So they get montage blades, you won't. Just a blade often so you can get that practice in, and don't be afraid to mess up just a little bit. And one of the things that Genji players also struggle with is getting from one target to the next. So one of the things that I recommend when you're practicing blades and, and you know, in ranked and stuff and trying to improve is just dashing up can help to get your Ana to nano you, but it's also really great for surveying the area and taking note of all of the enemy positions and then guessing where they will go to evade your blade. So one of the things you do is dash up, look down, survey the area, figure out where your enemies are, figure out who you're going to go for, and then save dash and be patient with who you're dashing to. Don't dash to the Lucio because he's going to boop you away. Don't dash to the Moira if you don't know if she has fade because she probably does and will fade away. Go for the targets that you know you can kill, that you know use their abilities, that you know aren't going to be able to counter you, and then let the rest of the kills come through luck. You know, consistency is the goal and practicing often is the most important thing that you can do. So just focus on the enemy behavior and the cooldowns and focus on getting the kills you know you can get and the rest will come naturally. And then finally, last but not least at number one, some general tips for blading and mechanical stuff. So first off, there's this really weird misconception that cutting, dashing, and then cutting is faster than cutting and cutting. It's actually the same amount of time and I don't know, you can literally just test this in the practice range. The purpose of using your cut and then dashing and then cutting using a naked blade is to dodge damage. That's the most important thing. Now on Nanoblade, it's a bit different, but for a naked blade, this is the most important thing. And then also one of the things that people don't know is that there is a lingering melee hitbox on blades so you can quickly flick from one target to the next to deal damage to both of them in a single swing, just like you can with melee and just like you can with Reinhardt Hammer. And, and another thing that I just really want to reiterate from the playstyle section is patience with dash is super, 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 super important. And one note is on avoiding abilities, use your deflect immediately after you blade. That's really useful and it's simply but you can actually typically, you know, deflect Graviton Surges and stuff like that if you just dash in the direction of the Zarya and then hold deflect immediately. Most Zaryas don't really pay attention for that. And then another thing is that you can save your jump for when you dash up to dodge and fake out abilities. I use this all the time and it works super, super well. And for the Nanoblade, I have a few tips. First of all is that Nanoblade is actually relatively low skill. I, I don't know where people got the idea that Nanoblade was really hard to do and it was really really technically difficult. It's not. If you get the idea that it is low skill, you'll begin to understand how easy it is to do. You really just need to aim to use that dash whenever you can guarantee to get the kill. So if you're dashing into a target with Nanoblade, you better be sure that they're not going to boop you away, otherwise it's over. But if you can always consistently land a dash and a slash, you'll always be able to get 2-3 to three kills with Nanoblade as long as you're patient with that dash. That is the overarching principle with Genji, is to be very patient with your abilities and your cooldowns. 
points. Another thing that you can do with Nanoblade specifically, a really cool tip, is that if you aim to confirm your kills with the dash and then dash into another target, you can get a really quick double kill. So you only need two slashes and a single dash to get a kill instead of two dashes, which actually doesn't seem like that much of an improvement, but it will allow you to get more slashes in, which means more damage, which is great. And another thing is just to stay calm when you play on Nanoblade. Just if you get CC'd, that's gonna happen. You literally invested two ults into the fight. If the enemy team invests two ults to counter you, then it's actually a fair trade. It's an even trade. And if they invest more than two ults, then it's just a net positive for your team, even though you technically didn't get that montage blade. You really should just be getting two kills or three kills with Nanoblade. That's all you need to win a team fight. And yeah, that's basically all the tips I have. So anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. It Again, I, I've said this in like the outro of most of the videos I've been making. I literally just have bullet points on the script. I, I don't write down all the words that I'm going to say now. So if you like this style, please let me know because I'm very unsure about whether or not it actually works. And uh, I'll continue to record videos like this because I seem to enjoy them more and people seem to enjoy them more. So if that's the case, let me know. You can message me on Discord. The link is in the description down below. You can join the Discord and ask me there. You can also follow us on Twitter. You can follow us on Instagram. And yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this one. Have a nice day. My name is Nate, and this was Blizzard Guides.